famous or something for there not to be a delay. But okay. um, uh, can I watch you through Discord? No. Uh, through Discord, no. I mean, I could share my screen, but it would be a little bit. Uh, I don't know how that would work. So All I right, think so it has. We can try it, but it would have to be like you have to join in a little bit before the time so we can practice a little bit. No worries. But uh, all right. So where do you want me to take off from? Do you want me to take off from the airport? Do you want me to start in the air? Or um, you can take off from the airport from Hariri. Because I saw that there's a couple of airports. There's a little airfield to a very small one. Uh, it's called uh, Jedayat El Matan Airport. I think it's northeast of or east of the city. Oh, you can go. Can I go from there? Really? Okay, I'll, I'll set that. No, as you, you can. Say again. Uh, I was I was saying that no, you can go from this one, from the Rafi Career International. Okay, from the inter Beirut International. Okay. Set as departure. What time would you like to fly, uh, Admiral? uh let's go for lunch and then uh, we'll see what it gives okay lunch time okay so and what kind of weather would you like now let's start with sunny let's let's make the things easy for us all right just a few clouds okay yeah okay a few clouds all right uh i'll just leave live air traffic and um all right. Here we, and uh, do you want me to go on a faster airplane or a slow airplane? Ah, uh, you can take a slower. Beirut is a small country. All right. Let's take a slow airplane. Okay. Let me put a bit more. Let me let me leave about sixty percent. How 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 much do you weigh? Me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 80, 80 kilograms on a good day. Okay. Uh, Wait, there's only a pilot? I want okay, let's let's go let's fly in the because I want to make this realistic, you know, so I want to fly uh I want to, us to fly in a plane that fits two people. I thought that the Savage Cup fit two people, but it's only giving me weight for one pilot here. So let's change to the uh let's change to the Cessna 172 and um 152 where I have the little hearts on. Okay, libraries, weight and balance. Let me make sure that my ATC options are there. There they are. Okay, weight and balance. So that, how much is that in pounds, do you know? <laughs> uh, that's about 180. 180 pounds, all right. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm about 170. I don't know. I guess we weigh the same. You, I mean, you're, but maybe I'm on 60. I don't know. All right. I'll put about 50% fuel. And uh, here we go. Okay, flight conditions. Hello, uh Welcome, viewers. We're taking off for a flight in Berlin, 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 Beirut, Lebanon, and I, I've never been to Beirut, but I have a, a passenger with me. What would you like to be referred to, Admiral? I call him Admiral, but he has to choose what he wants to be referred to in this stream. I can keep it as Admiral. Okay. I refer to this passenger. He's an illustrious passenger. He, he's lived in Beirut for some time. I do want to take another friend of mine who's actually from Beirut eventually, but I, I haven't had a chance recently. I, I, sh I should call him today. I'll give him a call after this and send him a link to this. And uh, I don't think you ever met him, Admiral, but because he lives in Cyprus now, but uh, he's from Beirut. And I've never been to this place, so I'm going to fly, and you're going to tell me where to go with a sort of five-second delay, of, I, I think, on the stream, and I'll orbit whatever you point out. It's like, orbit that. Just point out a building, say, orbit it, and, and I'll do that, and you talk, or whatever. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, so, as you can see already, this is a picturesque airport, because you're landing right away from the, from the, from the Mediterranean. So when you're landing, you're going over the ocean. A little bit like you go in, like, in Istanbul airport, in San Francisco airport. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to set... Uh, okay, so my, if, you're, if you imagine the Admiral sitting here next to me, okay, one day I think we'll probably be able to put our own uh, pilot models. Maybe you can already do that in the game. We can put our own avatars in. I'm going to control B to, to get the handbrake out. And hold on to your seat, Admiral. Here we go, full power. <laughs> and here we go. I'll do an external takeoff view. Well, let's just go internal, actually. That's a little more exciting. Because you don't know if you're going to really get the air or not. 
All right. Very bright. Nice weather conditions. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, low wind from the, I think, I don't know what direction that is. Okay, here we go, and we're rotating. Ro I, I never knew what, what the heck would they mean by rotating. Rotating is like the airplane, it goes like that. You rotate to go higher. And here we are. We're, we're, we're airborne, Admiral. All right. Are you going south right now? Uh, let me see. Looks like you're going south. One second. I, do, I haven't flown this. Yeah, I'm going south right now. Yeah. yeah no, Lebanon is basically like an 80, 80 90 kilometer stretch along the coast, uh, pretty much in northwest direction. So okay. if, you have this, if you have the sea on your right, then you're going south. If you have the sea on your left, then you're going north. All right. Should I head north? Uh, if you go north, you would see the Beirut itself. You can start there if you want. All right, sounds good. <laughs> We're gonna, we, we, you can try to spot if you would see the port that blew up like uh, two months ago. Okay, yeah, that was very horrible, it tragic. Had, yeah, it had pretty, like a two big silos, so it could be, could be, you can you can try to do the touch and go. Like, you know, it had like a two grain silo, so like when it exploded, like, you know, there were discussions in the UN community that, you know, probably there will be shortage of bread in the country because there is no more grain. Okay. So the right, is that where it is over there? Or where yeah, it was, so I guess? After, after that peninsula. So that peninsula is the fanciest part of Beirut. This is what is called Corniche. That's like a lot of Saudi and Qatari and whatever money parked there. Okay. Right you're right, you're flying along one of the poorest area of the city, like but right, next to the, right next to the airport, it's mm -hmm. called Daki. You can see it, like, you know, it's like small and kind of dingy. This is actually an amazing model, you know, they really sort of capture that it's like dingy. <laughs> yeah, like down here, right? Uh, Brazil is like that too, uh, near Galeon, where usually the, the poorest areas are near the airports. Galeão and Rio de Janeiro and uh, in São Paulo, uh, not always, but often, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can actually maybe even like if you pay a lot of attention, you would maybe even be able to see a Palestinian refugee camp, one of the biggest Palestinian like uh, refugee camps in Lebanon, which is right somewhere on your right. On my right. Okay, one second. Let me let me get the let me get the airplanes the. I'm just setting my sound here. I, I have to. Re I want to reduce the volume of the of the game for myself a bit so I can hear you a little better. But yeah, feel free to yeah keep uh, talking. I'll I'll get to you in a bit. All right, it's a little better. All right. Uh, what what direction is the Palestinian refugee camp? So down here somewhere. You're right. Those dingy, insane. Like you see that stadium, so yeah. before, I think on the right, you see those really small uh, construction things on the right? So that's yeah. Probably a Palestinian refugee camp. It's like a, yeah, it's like they're close to the clash there. It's like a no-go zone for like, you know, for tourists. Okay. We can fly by it a l uh, closer a little later. All right. So I'm going to orbit, I guess, this the scene of this this tragic... I don't you know. Can just, you just continue along. Keep flying close and close. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure how much time you have, but thanks so much for joining me. Uh, how long did you spend in the city? Um, two and a half years. So, uh, yeah, it's enough to see. I mean, the route is an amazing place uh, with a lot of problems of its own. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful city, beautiful Mediterranean city. But it's uh, like, you know, whenever we talk about unemployment, like I'm, I'm in Sweden, and for those of you who might be watching this, and one of the first things that you notice is the tremendous uh, inequality in the city. Like, because right now, when you're flying, this is called Corniche, this is like super expensive, like the flat would cost you like a million dollars there. So it's like real estate is more expensive than in Sweden. And Copy then, that. And then those places that were, you know, say, saying that it's a like, look at that, there's a swimming pool right behind, like, yeah, the, like, the, like, below you, right now, you see, that's an open-air swimming pool, like, right at Corniche. Yeah. Yeah. And those two buildings, this is, like, uh, that would be, uh, what's, what's the name? It's, like, a fancy hotel, that's one, the blue building, and then there is, like, a Lexington hotel, there's lots of, like, five-star hotels, because, basically, like, a lot
lot of Middle Eastern countries like Saudis, Qataris, you know, places where you cannot get alcohol, they come to the roof party. And you know, they stay you know, like somewhere around here in these areas. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty also common story. Like the, even I think in Sim City, the I remember in Sim City 2000, the, you know, the, uh, real estate by the water always costs more, right? That's where usually the more wealthier, wealthiest people live. Yeah, yeah, but the environment is just it's so condensed. You know, it's like I think it's like a 17th densest place on Earth. I mean, Se- like 17th, like one seven. Yeah, one seven. Hey, Vicious. Afternoon, man. Thanks for joining us on the flight. Um, so yeah, yeah. I think I think if you if you if you pan the camera from above, if you look. Yeah. So I think if this is the port, actually, you're approaching. It. Okay. Yeah, because so that that thing is right below, be, like below us right now. Yeah, you see, it's like it's like yachts. Okay. This this called Zaytuna Bay. This is like you know where there's like super rich people park their yachts. Okay. Uh, so now this place right behind below you, this is like on the right. This is the downtown. Okay. It's peninsula right, which is like it's artificial. This is built like since 2000. Okay, since 2000, this artificial like land here, basically reclamation of the sea has been built. Like the open sea right now, you're flying above. This is the military port. Sometimes you can see like UN boats over there. Okay. Right. Easy. Well, you see that? You see like behind on the right, there's like a star in the building. You see that? There's like the roads, they like in like in Rome, you know. Okay. Coalesce on one plaza. Okay. It's really, because that place is called like uh, what is it? Uh, Nejme, a star, and you can see it from it's impressive modeling. Yeah, the, the, like Microsoft, this is a long-term project for them. So tomorrow, actually, they have an update coming on, coming up. They're going to update Japan. So uh, because a lot of these places are made uh, with AI, you know, they just the AI looks at the satellite imagery and it, it plonks down a building that it thinks looks like, looks closest to the real building, but it might not look anything like it in real life. So what they do is they use this thing called photogrammet, gam, photogrammet, gametry. I always, I can never pronounce it. To Gramet. Yeah. And the satellite uh, elevation data into like a 3D model. There you go. Yeah, you, you're you're going to know much more about it than I do. So yeah, and so th- they're slowly going to you do that for you know all the places in the world. Uh, as, I don't know how many, but it's going to be a continuous effort. And if you're a th- third-party studio and you want to um, put your own model in, you can do that as well. So, so eventually things, uh, you know, things will look more like their, their real life counterparts. So is this the place that blew up here or was it that other place there? We will fly there. You turn back. So you see it on your left right now. Okay. And there is like a plaza. It's like there is one central plaza with like maybe six roads coming to it to the center. If you turn like 90 degrees to the left. All right. Uh, so yeah, so you're flying, so yeah, so right in front of you right now, yeah, like that, like that, like that, great now. You're All in right. front of what is called in Souk, this is like, you know, he used to be prime minister, his name was Rafik Hariri, he built this whole area, he was like super rich. Okay. And, and he built this whole this area, and then they blew him up, Hezbollah blew him up like in 2005. Cool, dude. Sorry, I'm talking yeah. to a chatter. Ever since they locked down, so it's like it's a super nice area, but there's so much security there. You come there, you will be shocked. There's like Kalashnikovs all over the place. Like here, around down down here where we just yeah, passed. Right. You see, you see that, like you know, like something like looks like stars. Yeah, know? that star there. Okay. Up from you, yeah, and right below you, right now, you're flying above the government house. Something else called Sarai. Um, we can continue flying along the coast, I think, so that we reach the, the port. Okay, so I'll I'll keep, I'll go back to where we were, um, the 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 direction we were headed. Another interesting thing that I can say about this, so that you know, like if you look closely behind, be, like be, behind, below you, uh, you just passed the line that was separating Beirut during the war. So during the civil war, there was something called Green Line. It separated basically the Christian, uh, like that highway, that is highway that's right behind you yeah 
that was a green line, that was a line of separation between the Christians and the Muslims. You can still see the differences, but that's like, that's like invisible wall. On the one side you still have mostly Muslim people living, on the other one is mostly Christians. So, so basically the civil war was a religious war basically? It was Christians against Muslims and uh, it's a more complicated? It's more, it's much more complicated. It's like if you try to explain a Syrian war to a five-year-old. So got it, got it. Where it started and what it became. Um, but yeah, it, it started uh, largely along the religious sort of fault lines and then also the economic ones. So yeah, I think, if I'm not mistaken, or like if you look to your right, like, yeah, that way. Yeah, so I think right in front of you, that's the place that blew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah, 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 yeah. Under this is what blew up down here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Right, lie right below you. That's the place that blew up. The, 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 yeah, that's the actual commercial containers. You see it. Okay. You can those things that are like you know along the coast. That's the cranes, you know, to offload the boats. Okay. Yeah. So that's funny. I thought I thought it was that other place all the way over there. I, I didn't. No, no, no. No, so the, all of these are containers. I mean, it's somewhere around here. It's uh, the, the port of Beirut is a huge place, right? Okay. It used to be a huge place. I don't even know what's left of it. Yeah, but but like, it's it's been like a a, a trading uh, nation for, isn't like for millennia? That weren't weren't they the Phoenici Phoenicians, uh, uh, the prede predecessors of the of the people in Lebanon? Wasn't this like a port way back, uh, thousands of years ago as well? I'm not sure yeah. about that history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So multiple cities along the coast, they're uh, they usually all are commercial ports. So Beirut is one of them. Haifa in in uh, in northern Israel today, that will be another one as well. They were actually connected a lot with each other before. Okay. Uh, you know because Haifa, because of the Arab uh, kind of embargo that used to be. Uh, Forced by all of the countries, it got cut out of the original economy. That used to be port of entry for many, for many kind of trade routes. Beirut is the other one in the north. There will be another one, Tripoli. Okay. Tripoli. If we continue flying along the coast, you'll see Tripoli is uh, used to be like a big entry port for Syria, which uh, uh, you know, like a city, like Tripoli is maybe about 100 kilometers away from Homs, which is like a huge Syrian city. Okay. And all of them were populated for like 2,000 years with like ancient Greeks and wow. Egyptians and whatnot. And if I could, if, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. If I can ch take that little intermission there about, you know, the Mediterranean populated for thousands of years, can you say something about the food that you ate around here? How was the food in Lebanon? So, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about it. <laughs> okay. No. I yeah. was Japanese guy and this Japanese guy is pretty picky with uh, food. So he was saying that Lebanese food is, in a sense, uh, very simple. And I kind of understand what he means. Uh, it's similar to like Italian food in the sense that it's based on the freshness of ingredients. Okay. But it's not really kind of refined processing of it. Do you know what I mean? I, I like, you know, if you compare like Italian food to French food, you know, like Italian pizza to like a French souffle, you know, one is like, you know, you just take like freshest ingredients, put them together in five minutes, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> and French souffle is like five hours of beating the eggs. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Mixing flavors. So, so the Japanese guy appreciated more the, the food that took a while longer to make? Yeah, because in, in, in Japan, it's all about umami, you know, it's the okay. taste. But okay. in Beirut, we ate lots of hummus and you can compare hummus across the places uh, it's fruits year long you can eat the kebab I mean it's a country which is funny enough a lot of people come to Lebanon to eat kebab so the you know like a barbecue kind of meat okay but that actually the Soviet countries are you know where I'm from were much more advanced in meat preparation yeah the, the Lebanese, the Lebanese beta fair and square and everything related to veggies and like chickpeas and you know, like that kind of condiments, you would say. Yeah. Uh, 
But in meat preparation, we have much more advanced techniques than in the I, I found. Personally. That's that's interesting. So, so uh, maybe one day I want you to go to Brazil, to the south of Brazil, and I want you to try some of the barbecues there. And I want to come to. Is it okay if I say here on stream where you're from, or do you prefer to keep that information yeah. secret? No, no. Okay. Uh, I want to come to Kyrgyzstan one day, and. Uh, and uh, that's not why where, where Borat is from. Borat is from Kazakhstan, but my friend is from. Kir 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 what? <laughs> no, no. Continue flying north if, if you want to see something. <laughs> oh, sorry. No. Amber, Amber was looking at Borat stuff yesterday, so I did, that's what it came to my head. Now, sorry. All right, let's keep going north, and I'll shut up here. Beautiful yeah. landscape. This. Is this? I, I, I think one of the interesting flights could be that we fly from Beirut to Tripoli. It's about 80 kilometers. Okay. So okay. Should be, should be enough for the screen. Okay. Lots of things to tell about on the long, along the coast. Th th this looks like a bug here, right? This giant thing here. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a, it's a factory or a, or a military installation or something. But I, I see sometimes in Microsoft Flight Simulator these... Uh, these uh, these these things like down here that it just looks like a bug that they, they put like some giant texture of like an industrial park or something and that's what that looks like to me uh, just just to finish the thought about uh about lebanese food i discovered the wine i mean yeah the, the lebanese it's um <laughs> it's a crazy sunny country and uh, the climate in the Bekaa Valley, Bekaa is uh, like behind that mountain range that you see on the horizon on the east. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it has an amazing microclimate for wine production. So the interesting part, because the Lebanon used to be like a French governorate. So okay. So really sort of all things French. So we visited like a boutique wine production where everything was from Burgundy. Like from technology to casks, Wow, nice. Yeah. So, so if you want to drink some good wine, you, you can go to Lebanon, right? Yeah, but it's expensive. Like, okay, it's like very expensive. To, for someone who's used to Italian or French standards of like a six year wine is an expensive wine, <laughs> Lebanon is crazy expensive. It's like 30 years a bottle. Yeah. Like, oh, cheap. Who, who uh, else? Who would drink this? <laughs> no, I know. I, I'm Ever since I've moved to New York, man, I, I've, you know, I'm like, I barely drink wine because it's so expensive to have a decent wine here. So I, I and I realized how spoiled I was living in Italy for so many years, and and the people who live in France, how spoiled they are to go to the supermarket and buy you know a six-year bottle of excellent wine. You know, <laughs> no wonder they drink wine of every meal. Uh, let me say hi. Hey Dom, I'm doing good, dude. How are you? It's Dom. At, uh, this is my uh, uh, my relative of mine in the UK. He's watching here. I'm, I'm flying with the Admiral. Someone, a friend of mine from Kyrgyzstan who lived in Lebanon for some years, and we're doing a flight up the coast from uh, Beirut to Tripoli. Is that it, Admiral? Yeah, yeah, like like the Libyan capital, Tripoli. Exactly. Okay, but it's not in Libya. It's uh, it's in Lebanon still. Yeah, even yeah. more. Confusing. Yeah, Libya is uh, far south, uh, probably in bearing two four zero from here, south. Uh, West southwest. I'm still getting used to these these uh, cardinal in between cardinal directions. Look at all these swimming pools. Look at all this this lovely Mid Eastern Mediterranean Sea here. We're yeah. flying over level on them. Hey, I have a message from uh, from Admiral Pollen here. What's up? Okay, I thought you were going to say something. I have my co-pilot, the Admiral Admiral Marcel Beck, flying with me. So I think you're flying right now above Junia. That looks like Junia in any case, if I'm not mistaken. This is like a small city. Well, yep. one of the first impressions that I had from Lebanon is that, it's that people actually, you know, there is really Beirut, between Beirut and Tripoli, which is like 80 kilometers away, there is really no countryside. You know, the country is so dense, you just go from one settlement to another settlement in like continuous sort of. Uh, uh, construction you know so that uh, people would say like oh this is a different city you're like we never left the city it's just the same <laughs> city. <laughs> and, and it takes some time to get used to that you know like I, I you know the country that i came from sweden or you know kyrgyzstan they're like pretty sparsely populated so like when you leave the city you feel it right you're like, yeah here's yeah. the end 
In Lebanon, it's not at all like that. It's specifically along the coast. It just construction just continues and continues and continues. Yeah, I I know exactly what you're talking about because I lived in São Paulo in Brazil. It's a city of over 20 million people, and basically, the city keeps growing. So you don't leave the city anymore. You're always in the city, and it's crazy. It's uh, it's uh, the 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 density of the population is a little scary, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, so you're flying Rojuni. Junior. This used to be like a hotel station place and whatnot. Uh, it's on a good day with no traffic. This is like a 10, 15 minutes away from downtown Beirut by car. But this is one of the densest uh, highways in the whole country. So I had colleagues who used to live here who would like commute for like a couple of hours. Cool, man. Sorry, I'm just replying to a little to a, one of the chatters here. Yeah, it's. Uh, where did you spend the most time there in the in Beirut, or did you spend a lot of time traveling when you lived there as well? Uh, we try to travel every weekend. I mean, the country is beautiful, so we went to the Syrian border. There's a beautiful city called Baalbek. It has uh, amazing ruins, one of the best preserved. Uh, uh, temples. I think it's a Dionysus temple. I, mean, I wouldn't surprise you with a temple after living in Rome, but you know it's a beautiful place. We went yeah, yeah. Sa so there's a city called Syria. It's very close to Israeli border. Which, uh, my favorite place in the country. There is a there is a cedar. You know, like for those of you who don't know, on the flag of Lebanon there is a cedar. It's a national tree. Yeah, that's on their flag, right? On the Lebanese flag. Uh, yeah. And there actually, there's not that many of them, so you have to travel around uh, outside. So that's the place where I used to like to go. It's about an hour driving from there. Okay. Um, so yeah, but otherwise, yeah, we lived in Beir we we lived in uh, in the city like, about the kil like you flew above my my place probably when you were circling around before. Okay, we can do a touch and go the next time, but uh, I think it's nice to do this flight now that, that we're doing it up the coast, like you're saying, and and you describe. Uh, you describe uh, the country and uh, your time there and the food and some of the places you can visit. Uh, yeah, it looks, I, I, I've always loved the, the Mediterranean. I, I moved yeah. to Tunisia when I was like a teenager in uh, North Africa, really. And that was my first taste of sort of the Mediterranean, some of the food and, and just the landscape, the very arid dryness of the earth and uh, olive trees and all these kind of like these shades of green that are very particular to this this part of the world i feel and so it's very close to my heart especially the food <laughs> yeah well as i said i mean it's an amazing place it's enjoyable i mean lebanon has its own issues uh many i can talk a lot about what um, it's not all par paradise but yeah it, it has a lot of things to give as well it's one of the most densest like culturally one of the densest places i've ever, ever visited in my life wow the densest places culturally interesting that's yeah, interesting no, because, no, it's like it's to a cloud here interesting no it has been like at the crossroads of civilizations for like two millennia you know and uh, in the last couple of hundred years you have the brits messing around you have the french messing around you have the americans <laughs> yeah you, you know so there's so many things going on a lot around that it's very different from Kyrgyzstan, which was like, you know, God forgotten for like the most part of the history, you know. Okay. It's like at the crossroads of everything. The, you know, the, the place where you're flying, that's where the, um, uh, what's that name? The, uh, gosh. When the Christians were fighting for the capture of Jerusalem, how do you call that? That I'm not going to be able to help you with because my history about the area is, uh, I know the basics, but, um, but it's okay. Oh, but, you know, like in the like 1100s or 1200s when the oh, the, the, like, like the Crusades. Yes, yes, thank you. All right, so course, look at the, look at this valley here. That's beautiful, huh? Look at that. In, it's very steep. In the north, you would have the, uh, the the temples and the castles established by the Crusaders. You know. I I watched recently with Amber a movie by this, what's the name of that famous Swedish director, Ingmar Bergman, and it's called The Seventh Seal, and it's about a knight that just came back to Sweden from the Crusades, and great film. I mean, if you, if you like especially black and white photography or just 
old films, so it's it's really a wonderful film. You know, it kind of makes fun of the whole religion, <laughs> the religious. Uh, I mean, the the characters. One of them is a, the knight that came back from the Crusades, and another, and then there's Death. Death is a main character, which is this bold guy with like a, a big black robe, and then there's the a theater like performer and his life, and and it's really a wonderful film. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend it. Uh, giving you a little bit of a, of a tour here of the inside of the Cessna 152 that we're flying here. If you imagine that my friend, uh, uh, the Admiral, he, he's sitting next to me here. I put on the correct weight, so we're actually flying as if we'd be flying together. Maybe we'll do this in real life one day. But if I flew in real life, as uh, Admiral uh, can tell you, uh, he probably wouldn't want to ride with me because I, I know the way I fly these things is not very safe. So I'm going to stick to the simulator. But uh, yeah, here we are going up the Lebanese coast. Maybe, maybe I can... Let, let me just... Uh, you're going down the Lebanese coast. Well, now I'm going down. Let, let me let me let me let me keep the 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 sea to my left so that we know we're going north. And I'm gonna press really quickly. Uh, let, let me let me press. Uh, let me first let me trim the aircraft to make sure that I don't crash. Okay, I have to keep that the nose going up a little. And let, let's point to the north again. And once I'm doing that, I'm gonna Alt Tab here to a different application, and I'm going to open up a Google map to kind of show you where we are in the world, more or less. If you see my plane uh, about to crash, Admiral, or, or diving at a dangerous speed, please let me know, okay? Uh, I'm going to leave you at this in this view for a second. Here I come. All right. Uh... So I think we're we're around here now. Maybe that's that big valley we saw. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Halat around there. Yeah, you remember I was talking talking about like very condensed place that was Julian. They just feel like behind. Yeah, I think I think that's about right. You're All right, right. All right. Just giving our viewers here a little uh, a little mm -hmm. little idea of where we are in the world right now, and this is the the Eastern Mediterranean. Never been there. I, I've I've had a. I, I need to go visit. I mean, I, I've had many invitations from friends who live in, in Israel and Lebanon, uh, and I've never gotten around to going. So I really hope that I can when this this mess is 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 done. Okay. So here we are. Eastern Mediterranean. By Lebanon. All right. Oh, I'm I'm just doing a little a little zoom here. Here, here this is where we are, everybody. All right. All right, all righty. Okay, back to back to the admiral. Here we are. No worries about it. The One of the things that I can say that you can see that you know the um, all the housing is right next to the foothills of the mountain. This is called, I think, this mountain range is called Anti Ante Lebanon or something like that. Okay. Because it's was French naming it, and this is what actually is called Mont Liban. This is Mont means mountain and Liban. That this is what the French and the Christian, because you know Lebanon, this area used to be very much predominantly uh, uh, Catholic Christians. Yeah. And I, I was like sort of really psyched to learn that the France has been protecting this area for almost a thousand years from the time of the Crusades. The French has been giving protection to this area of the Mediterranean. Okay. Uh, but then you know in the 1940s. Basically, basically the Lebanon was ending by these mountains that are on your right. Okay. Uh, this is the end of Lebanon over here, and, and and the beginning of Syria. I don't know. I think on the you should see pretty big city before the end of Lebanon. Okay, I'm people. I'm diving down. I'm keeping I keep my eye on airspeed so we don't fall to pieces here or get the Microsoft menu of death. But I'm just go diving down a little because there's a cloud a little bit obscuring our vision. Uh, that we just uh, went below that cloud over there, everybody. All right, so let's. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I think, I think you you didn't reach. I mean, it would be really fast if you already reached Tripoli. Tripoli is pretty big city, as we yeah. So. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't think we're there yet. Okay. All right. Let's so keep going. French, the whatever in the early 20th century, when they were like, you know, we want to create an independent Christian country in the Middle East. They were, um, they were like, but if we would create only where the traditional we were engaging, this would be a really small country, you know, because that's basically it would be the country that you just flew. Okay. 
And then they added all of the parts be like behind this uh, mountain uh, in the Bikar Valley, which is a pretty big agricultural area. But it, it just gives you an impression of like, you know, how, I'm not here to judge at all, it's, you know, it's history. Um, it's more about how sort of these countries have been messing around with this region for quite a while by now. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I hear you, man. I, I, I recently read, uh, I mean, I have a book here behind me. I, I'm gonna start doing some book recommendations on these streams. This book here is called uh, Sapiens by this uh, man called Yuval Noah Harari. And in, in Italy, we call this guy a capoccione, like a capoccio means head, and capoccione is a big head, okay? So the guy, I don't know if he has a big head, but he has a, a really amazing mind, and he wrote this basically brief history of humankind, of our species. And he lives uh, south, I think, uh, Haifa, south of here, right? Quite a bit way south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually talks about this area. He talks about the fact that uh, how it wouldn't work to sort of go back to the normal because the normal back here was like nomadic tribes that used to be raised. It's like he was talking about more about Haifa and like Jerusalem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he talks a lot about the Middle East, actually. The, the funny thing is that his name is no. I, I read that book, too. His name is Noah Harari, and the first time when I picked up the book, my wife gave me it as a present, I was laughing because, you know, Lebanon is technically at war with Israel, and their prime minister at the time was Rafiq Hariri. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to kind of sound a little similar. <laughs> it's like one letter difference, Harari versus Hariri, you know. But I mean, yeah, it's like these places are connected. I mean, and they historic like, in the long history of humankind, they were, they've been connected to each other. It's been the last whatever, 60 years that they're separated. Uh, after the Second World War, that's when the, then it's got, that's when really things got really screwed up, right? Like uh, they, they went in and they divided it up. Uh, like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The British uh, and the French and uh, know, all the belligerents there. I, I mean, the division game was a bit before that, but that's when it escalated to like an open war, right? So in 46 with the establishment of Israel and then the first Arab-Israeli war, and uh, then they sort of started building yeah, crimes against the landscape, uh, I call those, uh, that's not only my word, it's a word of uh, this photographer called Joseph Kodelka. He just came out of this book called Ruins, I believe. And he has a good quote in that book that basically says that ruins, most people think that ruins are the past. You look at ruins like, oh, that's the past, but actually he thinks ruins are the future because in the end, we're all going to be ruins. Every, all this we're seeing is going to be ruins anywhere in the world. That's just the nature of life and of change. But he has this other book called Wall, about the wall between the Palestinian and uh, the wall that the Israelis built between uh, Palestine and, 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 and Israel. But, you know, th these labels that they give to this land, but, and, and Kodelka calls it a, 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 a crime against the landscape because it is so ugly, a big wall and, and like barbed wire, you know, it's so ugly and, and it just destroys landscape. That, that'll be my little political rant, uh, little twist around here. I'll give it back to you now, Admiral. No, I think we're approaching Tripoli, no? What does it look like? Let's take a look down the bottom there. Yeah, it looks like we're approaching a pretty big city, right? So this okay, is I can press V here. I can, so is, is this Z190? Is that, like, uh, that might be the airport. Let's take a look at air traffic control. Uh, nearest airport list, uh, Wuja Al Hajar. Diomet Airport. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's a airport there, but I can I can open the Google Map. Let me just try to. There's a bit of cloud here. I see I see there's a runway. What, what looks like a runway down there. So let me look at the Google Map real quick. And uh, I'll tab here. And okay, we're this is Silata. We're here in Silata. Next Cheka and next Tripoli. Okay, so Silata, Hamat, Cuba, Florida, Florida Beach. <laughs> is that where Mar-a-Lago is? Just kidding. We didn't, we, we didn't, we didn't uh, reach the city yet. Um, yeah, I think yeah, probably Tripoli is a bit further away. Yeah. I think it's, uh, I think it's down there. We're at 40 minutes. Yeah, All right. well, yeah no, I, I, I hear you. I mean, in some places, but in some places that, you know, these 
for a good difference is for the pretty star, I guess. I, I think it's, you know, like, like the classic during the night along the, uh, you would be able to see this, like, from space, the difference between South Korea and North Korea. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure, but because the uh, the border between Israel and Lebanon is pre pretty much a straight line in the south, it's pretty close to a straight line. Yeah. Uh, it would be interesting if you would, if you would fly with your Cessna, if you would be able to sort of distinguish where the Israel begins and Lebanon ends. Yeah, I, I, I do plan on doing, a, a f I was thinking about doing flights on, on the most heavily, you know, militarized and defended borders in the world. Like, uh, you know, like a North South Korea, maybe maybe the, the Jerusalem, the, the wall in, in, in Israel and in Palestine. Uh, there's that place in, I think, Morocco. There's there's a huge, like, very heavily militarized uh, fence over there. I forget the name right now. So I was thinking about doing there. There's some other little airplanes, or some moving vehicles, a fuel truck. Yeah, yeah. It looks like, uh, like an airfield, yeah. Yeah, there's a little airfield there. And I think up here, this we're gonna get close to Tripoli here after this bay over here. If I open, sorry, I f sometimes I forget to turn off this view here. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah. So there's this Bargun Cheka, and then further up on this peninsula up there, I think that's Tripoli. Yeah. So. Oh. So yeah, if you would, if you would go back to Google the map and zoom out a little bit, so that you give an impression of what you were talking about, about before about Syria, so zoom out a little bit. Do you want me to go from satellite view to regular view, or is this okay? You see how close, so you see how close the Homs is. Homs is a big city in Syria. So I mean. Oh, right there, yeah. Yeah. So the entry to it was either from uh, from Tripoli, which is very very close, or another one was from Latakia. That, that's the Syrian port. Uh, but Tripoli historically has been trading with uh, homes, and because of the war, I mean, they, I mean, Tripoli is pretty poor city compared to Beirut, and because of the war and the border closures, uh, the business in Tripoli is pretty much affected, I mean, like badly affected. And yeah. Another thing that is, uh, I'm going to talk about more about the city itself. What's interesting there once we approach it, you can close the map and see what you find. You can actually know. One of the go back one last time, one last time. Yeah, like look at this. This is actually very impressive. Look at this. How all the green areas is like along the coast, and then how it becomes really dry when you go in. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's the so like if you see in Lebanon, we were flying along this green line, green sort of lush area. That's what the French kind of originally considered as Lebanon. And okay. There and that's what Syria kind of weird. Okay. Yeah, and, and with the whole climate change and stuff, these, these deserts are growing, right? So that was, that's part of what's happening there. Um, I'm not. Uh, I don't know about. Uh, I don't know about Middle East. I don't know about uh, these places. I know in in uh, in uh, Sahara, in Africa, that was yeah, it, well, that was the case for quite a while actually. But then, it, it's not in all like it's not in all places. In some places, it's actually getting greener. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not that simple, right? So yeah. So what I was going to say about this place is that Tripoli is actually a Muslim city. It's a Sunni city. Okay. Over there. Uh, and the, uh, that's where the sort of previous prime minister's plan. Do you remember when we were flying about Beirut? I said about the prime minister Hariri. Uh, that's a really important clan in Lebanon. Uh, that's what the city they come from. When you, and like, you know, this downtown of Beirut was bombed a lot and then they kind of demolished it, so it doesn't look like a lot like Middle Eastern city. Okay. Tripoli, in, in the downtown Tripoli, there's like a huge, you know, bazaar, basically. Okay, it looks more like a Middle Eastern, uh, a traditional city, like a, a mosques, bazaars, like a Medina type place, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, when you, when you imagine, like, you know, when you imagine a, a Middle Eastern city with tiny, sort of passages and like meat being traded next to clothes. That's sort of how the uh, the souk, the market of uh, Tripoli looks like. It doesn't look like at all like that in Beirut. In Beirut, it's like a super brand new shopping mall. Okay. Um, it's a pretty poor area, as I said before. It got affected a lot by the war. Um, 
considered to be quite a criminal city. Uh, so so I, I used to work, uh, I used to, what I was doing in Lebanon, I was, used to work for a development agency for UN. And uh, usually when you talk about like youth, disenfranchised youth, you talk about secrecy a lot. Okay, this, this city here. Yeah. And what, where is yeah. the where is the the biggest refugee camp from? Uh, you know, this I, I know there are a lot of refugees from the Syrian war coming who who are in Lebanon. Uh, where, where is the biggest refugee camp? So the thing is that Lebanon has twelve. Let, let me give you f first like short intro and then go like sort of segue into the uh, into the, the Syrian crisis. So the sure. the Palestinian so the first Israeli uh, um, Arab war. There was a lot of Palestinian refugees who moved into Lebanon, and the, they established the 12 camps. And they've been there in the country since like 70 years now, 80 years now. Okay. Um, uh, because of that, and you know, like Lebanon has been struggling with this Palestinian refugee question for 80 years. When the Syrian refugees started arriving in 2011, they, uh, they didn't allow them to establish camps. They said there is no way that we're going to allow you to put camps because we're afraid that you know uh, that the international community would go away and then we will be left with these areas where you know no go zones because that's kind of partially what happened with the Palestinian camps. Yeah. Uh, so there is no single camp that uh, in Lebanon for Syrian refugees. They live more like in municipalities. So they, like in many places, they occupy like agricultural fields. But I think 70% of them are actually uh, renting housing from Lebanese. Okay. So they actually bring in a, a, an economy there as well. If, if yeah, yeah. But I if you want to see like, you know, the traditional understanding of a camp, uh, you, you need to fly east closer to Syrian border. So okay. It's not one thing. You just, you see an agricultural field with tents. Yeah. And yeah. Houses. Yeah, we're around here. We're approaching Tripoli. Tripoli is in Lebanon, then, right? Yeah. Okay, and then and then the Syria bor Syrian border comes up. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Homs. About Tripoli, it used to be a really rich city, uh, like in old days. So they were preparing for a World Expo, like 1975, I think, or something like that. And there is this, uh, you should know it, Simon, that crazy architect that built Brasilia. Uh, Oscar Niemeyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he built the Beirut, the Tripoli Expo Place as well. Uh, I think it's right in front of you. The, this it. thing over here, maybe? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it might be that. I'm not fully sure. Uh, but it's a, it's a pretty crazy place. It's all like in concrete, you know, like very Oscar Niemeyer type. Yeah, yeah, a bit, a bit brutalist. Uh. Yeah, he wanted to build like an open arena for theater, and then they would just have a concert hall, which is basically looks like a like UFO made out of concrete. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, you know, like yeah, people like rave about Oscar Niemeyer, but, but I, he's definitely not my favorite architect. I think he's a bit too brutalist for my taste, too much concrete, you know. Uh, to no, it's it's iconic uh, architecture, but you're not necessarily. It's not beautiful, in my opinion. You know. No, it's pretty rough. And, uh, yeah. Just be worried with concrete. So yeah, I think uh. you're flying maybe about it right now. That's, that's okay. Really All right, I don't, can't get away from this guy. I mean, I come to New York, it's Oscar Niemeyer, uh, obviously Brazilian. You know, jeez. All right. Even in Tripoli, uh, not Libya, but Tripoli, Lebanon, Oscar okay, Niemeyer. Okay. Total. So that that. <laughs> Like, can you pan it again from above? Yeah. The camera from above. So that long thing, that long thing below, below you, I think that's an exhibition hall. Okay. And that round thing, that's the thinking. It's actually in reality. It's it, it looks like it's a, like a coliseum, but it's not. It's 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 more like a UFO. That thing there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a giant tank or like yeah, like a UFO that landed. You know. It's like uh, it's like a great great video game XCOM. Well, it's about defending yeah, Earth from they're, UFOs. They're building it for like seventy four. I don't know. You can check me out on Wikipedia afterwards. Fact check. But yeah. they were building it for like an expo in seventy six or seventy four. Okay. And then the war started. You know, the civil war started, and then they didn't finish it. So this place hasn't been used for like 
15 years. Or so. And they never finished it basically after that. Um, yeah, no, I think they, they, they didn't even finish the construction and then it kind of fell off. And right now it's really, it's kind of fenced off. So you need to go through like a security check. There's a, like some a couple of board guards that are waiting for you. Okay. And you enter it and uh, it's all empty basically. It's like, you know, there's concrete kind of uh, skeleton slabs, but uh, nothing inside. The exhibition hall is still used, I think. I saw some cars inside or something. Okay, some expensive cars from some for some Saudi princes or something. No, not in Tripoli. Tripoli okay. is dead cities. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> but they stay in Beirut, right? Okay. <laughs> they stay in Beirut on the coast and Julia. Yeah. There's some little islands over there. Look at those little islands. It's a beautiful That's interesting. City. I mean, I, I like it more than Beirut. It's interesting. Like yeah. So one of those islands is called Turtle Island. Actually, they it's like it's restricted to. Four visiting because um, you have some turtle turtles nesting place over there. I think I this to the left this place is called Mina. This you know like a small peninsula to the left is called the Mina. This over here? Yeah. Yeah it looks yeah, like a looks like some sort of building, maybe even some some pine tree some uh, palm trees by there. Let me take a look see if I can yeah, zoom yeah, in. On the on the on the along the coast there's some pine trees. It's a very nice place to walk around. It's nice. There's the yachts of all the yeah. I stay a couple of times in Mina. And then it means that right below you you should have the sort of the sweep of the roof of Tripoli somewhere. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult to see. There's a there's another Palestinian camp pretty big Palestinian camp in, in Tripoli, very poor. Maybe that on the right, you see that there's a construction site that gets really, really small there. Yeah, like those little houses there. Yeah, in, in Brazil, those are definitely generally called a, a favelas, like the shanty towns. You can fly closer. Okay, let's get closer and see. see. A big concretey flat thing, you see it? That over right. there? Sound, there's something that looks like a tank. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think this is actually a uh, a thirteen hundred castle built by uh, uh, built the, by the Crusaders. Yeah. Wow, that yeah. thing there, huh? Yeah, I think it's a San Gil or something like that, along those lines. It has okay. a French name. And as, are there are there uh, is there a lot of uh, foreigners living in Tripoli as well, or is it mostly uh, people from the region here? I mean, no fancy foreigners. If there are some foreigners, there's no fancy foreigners living in All right. Italy. Look at this yeah. lighting here. This is pretty nice. But it's a, it's, a, it's a great place if you someone wants to learn Arabic. This is a great place to learn Arabic because you know, in Beirut, people speak more French than Arabic in some districts and definitely more English. Okay. So this, so, is, uh, this is where you come to learn uh, Arabic if you want. And I should mention here, and I, if I can interrupt you for one second, Admiral, the Admiral is a polyglot. He speaks a few languages, right? I don't remember how many. I, I don't have enough fingers in one hand to count anymore. But uh, he speaks definitely many more languages than I do, and properly, not just uh, compared to me, at least, properly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, ha I have a lot of fake languages, like fake Portuguese and fake Italian. That's all right. Whatever, whatever, whatever you, you need to get to, to communicate, right? Yeah. Yeah. What else? Uh, no, I yeah, f for seven minutes to go. I don't know if you have any other thoughts. I'm going to, I mean, uh, you can keep going if you want, but I'm probably going to take a break uh, once, once about an hour time. No, no, it's, it's all right. I can take a break as well. Uh, no, I, I, I had a thought which I lost about uh, Tripoli and... Uh, uh, no worries. Take your time. There's no. I, I, the nice thing about. No, no, no. Now I remember. Now I remember because you asked me about food before. So. Okay. I mean, as you can imagine, fish is pretty big deal in Lebanon because you know it's in the Mediterranean. Oh, nice yeah. fish. So, yeah. So uh, in Beirut it's really expensive, but in Tripoli I ate like an amazing fish. You know, like it was like a place in the souk in the market. Yeah. Where there's there's a small shop selling frozen fish, but then it's like, you know, a lot of people actually eat in place. Yeah. Uh, so the restaurant right next door. So you can either buy the fish and go home, or you can just sit down and go and point at the fish that you want to get cooked, and they will cook it for you, you know? Oh, wow, that's and nice. Yeah, it, it really, it was really cheap. I think it's even cheaper probably now. I ate, like, really nice. And very good, I can imagine, like. Yeah, very nice, very good, very, very fresh. 
issued Tripoli. Um, we, we once, me and my brother and my sister, I mean, this is a beautiful experience that we kind of, that we had. Uh, Tripoli, as I said before, is a very Muslim city. And during the, we traveled to there during the Ramadan, the holy month. And you know, like it's in the evening and uh, we were sitting there in this restaurant and everyone is waiting, you know, like there's this kind of Muslim families joining for this fish restaurant and the food is ready and everyone is ready and they're just waiting for the, uh, for the, you know, for the call, for the prayer call. Yeah. yeah. And it was beautiful, you know, because kind of like, you know, the energy that you have, like, you know, they, they are all united by the same sort of an idea that, you know, we're going to eat soon. It's going to be a feast. We are so happy that, you know, uh, the day is coming to an end. And it's something that is a, if anyone travels to, you know, these parts of the world, it's, it's something to experience, you know, because they suddenly like everyone from children to adults, they have like a festive, uh, festive kind of a mood. I guess it's maybe somewhat similar that you can relate to as carnival in Rio or something. Yeah. Yeah. There's like an event and, and especially with food, you know, uh, you're, everyone's hungry. You want to eat and it's, it's, you're so happy when you're, when you when you fill your belly of some lovely food, especially uh, one of my f yeah well we needed to live but what I've yeah. what I love about the Med Mediterranean everywhere like you know Lebanon that you're giving me a a lovely uh, little overview here a place I've never been but also Italy and Tunisia where are both places that I lived and Greece that I spent uh, a month traveling around the the food uh, it's it's part of the cultural uh, it's part of the culture, it's part of the everyday life of the people from a young age. So it's not like a super commercialized thing where food is, is just something that you, you know, you see adverts about and then you, you buy something that looks like something radioactive, you know. It's actually from a young age, people learn, uh, you know, how to prepare things and, and they love it, uh, eating together. And, and this, that's what I miss about this part of the world the most, the, the culture yeah. surrounding the food. My brother, he liked the food. He came to Lebanon once. He liked the food. He didn't like the country. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I asked him why, because, you know, for me, Lebanon was so beautiful. My brother's reaction was, I mean, Kyrgyzstan is a pretty cool country as well. It has a lot of shanty towns and whatnot. And my brother's reaction was like, you know what? Uh, if I want to see a shanty town, I can just go out in the street in Bishkek. You know, I didn't need to travel half, halfway around the world to see a shanty town. <laughs> I thought that is a fair enough description. You know, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Well, a lot of Europeans or Americans or Canadians, you know, they travel to these places, so it's so exotic, you know, but when they come from Kyrgyzstan, like, this is not exotic at all. This is exactly like the thing next door that I have to live with every day. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. I, yeah, I mean, I, I like to think of the Douglas Adams. So actually, I haven't read that book. I read Hitchhiker's Guide of the, to the Galaxy, but there's... I think a sequel to that is called The Restaurant at the End of the Universe. And I've always, I haven't read the book, but I love the title because I sometimes tell Amber, I'll go anywhere as long as there's good food in the end. I don't care what the place is like, as long as there's a good food, I, I'll go, okay? That for me is, uh, is the highlight of most places. Of course, I love natural beauty as well, but, um, but the food is always what, what gets impressed in my mind as like a giant robot of a clamp stepped on my head, you know? All right, uh, where should I land, uh, Admiral? We're at two minutes to go, but... And try to land right next to that Oscar Niemeyer thing. I can't get away from this Oscar Niemeyer guy, but all right, I already did a touch and go in his building in New York City, and I survived that, so let's... Should I land on the roof of this thing? Try to land on the roof of that thing, man. With the UFO thing? Like that little the little thing that looks like Colosseum? Oh, like... This long, this long... Oh, this long thing. Okay, that one won't be hard at all unless it's like a glitched out. Because sometimes it's glitched out and there's no collision model. Uh, but okay, let's give it a shot. And if we get the Microsoft menu of death, then, you know, I'll just blame Oscar Niemeyer. I mean, poor guy. I think he's dead, so I just shouldn't really talk too much bad about him. He, you know, I'm sure he was a nice guy. I mean, who knows? But okay, here we go. Uh, Many thanks here. Uh, I hope this is one of many future little discussions and, and, and fly, uh, flights with uh, my friend uh, Marcel Beck, who very kindly agreed to join me here and, and give a description of, of this uh, beautiful part of the world here in Lebanon. We've flown from Beirut to Tripoli, not Tripoli, but Tripoli, Lebanon to the north. And now I'm going to put my flaps down and we're going to touch down here on 
a guy I can't get away from. Oscar Niemeyer is building in Tripoli. Maybe they'll maybe they'll finish it one day, right? Okay. All right. Oh. Another thing I remember from the from this part of the world is the driving. I mean, uh, the, the the you know, it's it's it's, it's it, it can be yeah, worse than the Los Santos. It's one of a, this is a different level in this country. That's yeah, that's true. <laughs> Look difficult at all. It's true. I think this is going to be pretty easy unless there's a there's damage control. Here you go. All right. Oh. All right. Let's put. Let me press the brakes here. Oh. Okay. Quite bumpy, but uh, that worked. <laughs> yeah, well, provided, provided <laughs> landed on the roof. Why it's jumping? Oh, there you go. You damaged your landing gear. <laughs> All right, Admiral, okay. it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. Let's do it again. Just think of a place oh, you want to go. First, uh, yeah, no, 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 absolutely. You you look into your schedule. I think uh, eight eight, 8 p.m. and work. I mean, we have a six-hour difference. It works well for me with your afternoon podcast. I can jump on chip in. It's it's a lot of fun. Oh, it's great fun for me, and I hope that eventually you get yourself a gaming PC. Uh, and we can actually fly together, though, whatever you prefer. I know that you're a very busy person, so if you want to just tag along and talk, that's a great pleasure for me as well. Whatever works, all right? All right. Cheers, man. All right. Cheers, dude. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Just uh, let, whenever you want to meet up, just, just message me. Thanks so much for joining. Bye. All right. Peace out. I'll see you all a little later. I'm going to take a little break here. I'll be back in a little bit with another video game. So let me see if I can turn on the be right back thing. Does that work? Okay. Yep, that works.